pretty much every every decision that I've made, like has been in, like professionally and financially, mm-hmm. has been about going snowboarding and surfing. <laughs> more, really, if I'm if I'm being. Hello and welcome to the UK Surf Show. We are your hosts. I'm Pete. And I'm Leighton. On this episode, we speak to Matt Barr. Yes, Matt from Looking Sideways podcast. Amazing podcast. Quite inspirational to us, Matt is, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. He's had some absolutely amazing guests, as well as my favourite skateboarder of all time, Jamie yeah. Thomas. Do you know what? We didn't even ask him about Taylor Knox. That's how many people he's interviewed, like yeah. so many cool people that we forgot to even ask him about yeah. Taylor um, Knox. We're, we're looking down the list of like people he's interviewed, first of all, we go, oh, 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 yeah. uh, oh ask him about, ask him about, ask him about, yeah. yeah. But like, you don't want to spend your whole time talking to someone, asking them about other people, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no. I Which mean, I think we did that anyway. Yeah, but he, no, he's, he's a really cool guy, isn't he? And he's I, a professional. <laughs> yes, he is. Unlike us. <laughs> yeah, really nice guy and a really great chat with him. Before we get into this one, don't forget we've got your discount codes for North Core and Surface Wetsuits. Discount code for North Core is SS Podcast 15. That is SS Podcast 15, all capitals, no spaces. And that will get you 15% off anything you order from North Core. And your discount code for Surface is the UK Surf Show 10, and that will give you 10% off anything you order on their website. Yep, that is spelled S R F A C E. Uh, yeah, so we'll get into this one and then we'll come back afterwards. Hello, I am Matt Barr. I run the Looking Sideways podcast. I piss about for a living, I would say, and I am getting worse at every board sport that I'm been in two for years <laughs> that <feeling. laughs> definitely know that feeling yeah I, well, i'm, I'm down yeah. burps now only on skateboarding <laughs> well I, I haven't really skated in years and then um like we did the classic like old man skate club thing. like a load of my mates that i grew up snowboarding with like we all moved to brighton and like the so that like everyone just sort of got into skateboarding recently. I skated when I was a kid and I've skated on and off over the years. It's like the thing that got me into it, but I haven't really skated for years really. So I've been, but I've been going to the skate park on a Tuesday night, like the classic old man skate thing. Yeah. Like everyone's booked it out for two hours. <laughs> and yeah, I was like, wow, fuck me. I'm, really shit at this like, <laughs> and it really and it really hurts yeah the, yeah the fear element comes into it now doesn't it because you're like oh i i could actually break an elbow yeah. or a hip or something if here. i hurt myself i'm not going to be going to work next week am i or yeah. something like that yeah exactly and i slammed and landed on the corner of a little manual pad thing on my hip and i was like you know i was proper like oh, i must have like broke something there but it was actually just a normal skate slam <laughs> to be honest. and then i was like i don't remember like and like you say for the rest of the session i was just that was it really i was i didn't i didn't really want to commit to anything because oh, yeah. i was like that just hurt too much and um i was like afterwards i was like i really don't remember that when i was younger like you know you do that and you just be like whatever get on yeah it's, you know yeah. so yeah but it's, it's been fun though i've actually been really enjoying it like um getting back into it and try to learn a load of, you know, base, very, very basic tricks again. Cause I grew up skating street, not transition. So like being in a skate park with transitions is I'm effectively a beginner again, really. Um, but yeah, it's good. When you first got into skating, was that like around the nineties and stuff? Yeah. It was about 1990. Yeah. Yeah. So that would have been about the same time as, about us. The same time as us. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, if you think back to then, there's no way you would have seen like, a 40 year old skater in 1990 right. you know so it's a bit or or, or a mini ramp or a transition unless you were lucky enough to live near like one of the three skate parks in the yeah, yeah 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 but it, it, it's that really weird thing now isn't it it's, it's like a it's like a new demographic of skaters now what an old demographic of skaters yeah. should i say yeah you're right i never actually thought of that but you would yeah it will you i mean you would have just been like what wouldn't you if you'd have seen yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a 50 year old skater then you'd have been like yeah. Well, Jesus. Some, right, someone um, we did a live podcast at the campus skate park and someone posed a question there which is why is there not more female shapers and stuff like that in the surfing industry and it was a bit tough to answer at the time but someone said afterwards well actually if you think about it in skateboarding terms as well as well as in surfing terms all those people that have come through like 20 years ago they're now older and they're now in that position where they want to do those sorts of things and they said 
maybe that will happen with surfing as well because 20 years ago it was major i'd say probably 90 percent not even 95 percent male dominated yeah and now it's i reckon it's about 80 70 80 30 or something like that yeah that's a good point actually i don't thought of that either i was just in hosagor and it was there was noticeably more women in the water yeah. which was i mean last time i was there was probably three years ago and um it was good it was great i mean still a lot of old old french dickheads in the water but, um, <laughs> you know, you're not but, very but french eat. listening then have you on your, uh, <laughs> yeah. your demographic <laughs> Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's surfing, isn't it? It's just that, it's just that, like, there's a lot of ballads around. Yeah, I, I really want to go to Hossegor. Um, it's actually a plan to go there next year. So when when my when my my missus just had a had a baby, so um, when she's back at work next year, our, our kind of family holiday is hopefully fingers crossed going to be Hossegor. So what was what was it like? Did you get in the water? And I did, and I was reminded of how bad i am at surfing <laughs> <laughs> to be honest no i mean you know i surf in brighton and it's you know it's wind it's it's wind swell like, let's yeah. be honest you know it's like it's it's low period wind swell which is a laugh and there's a great scene here and there's a really tight knit scene here and we all you know we surf a lot and then we and then like generally like everyone in the uk i go down the southwest or you know like i'll, I'll you know i'll do the classics mm -hmm. and even then obviously even if you get a good day like down the southwest or whatever it's it's just not the same as southwest france is it so if you if you're gonna and i'm you know i'm a very average intermediate surfer so like getting getting in paddling out in like hostagor and <laughs> super rippy and everyone's really good and like you know it's it's a challenge but it was fun i got a few waves yeah. like and i just sort of came back thinking like the, you know like you always do like all right i gotta get fit and i've got to, you know i've got to start being a bit more mindful about this rather than you know i did because i didn't i was quite busy prepping for that trip so i didn't really think about it yeah. before i went but i literally like the night before was like oh fuck i'm going surfing all right <laughs> yeah. um and then i was like Oh, I actually got a board bag for, for my board. Like, I've got like a, a long haul, you know, like massive board bag. Yeah. But I didn't actually have a, a single board bag that I could put my board yeah. in. So I was like, oh, I'll just hire a board when I get there. And then that was a mistake because I ended up hiring this board that I didn't get on with. And um, so it was, it was funny. Me, me and my mate were like, that I went over there with, were, were, he was the same. Like, he's a way better surfer than me, but he had a shocker as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it so. makes you feel better then, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, but it was on on the French old French bell end thing. Like it was funny because I've got I've got like some really good mates over there who, who were really good surfers. Like I've got a mate over there who's an Aussie lad called Darren who uh, runs the pie shop in uh, Les Daniel. And, you know, he's lived there 25 years. He, he absolutely rips like, you know, charges like massive gravier like he's and we were out one day. And he was on the peak, I'm like skulking on the shoulder. And this uh, this guy starts, just starts whistling at him, you know, before he even went for the wave. And, you know, they're, they're these old boys, because they're like so territorial and so busy, they're just like, before they're even taking off, they're whistling. Right. You know, not even like, and I was like, what's that all about? And he's like, ah, oh, you know, they're just letting everyone know they're here, basically. <sighs> Like no, like no, like beyond etiquette. Yeah. Like it's not. Even, no one's even paddling. Yeah. Just like, just, yeah. just, just trying to pick you off like, before you even got the wave. Well, yeah, just try to like alpha everyone yeah. out, really. Um, which worked. In my <laughs> <case>. <laughs> it's just there's no need for it, is there at all? There's, there's, if you think about surfing in like every time we've been out, especially it's worse in the summer. I think there's you know there's more people like that in the summer. But it makes me think often, where the hell are these people in the winter? Because you never see, like, you, we never have the same trouble. Well, no, maybe, maybe maybe in the summer because of the crowds that come in, maybe they just get, the locals just get a bit more frustrated than normal, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. That's, that's, that's my I, But my mate, though, my mate was saying, like, he told a story about how he'd been surfing the other day and paddles to the peak and this, this again, another, like, notorious local old boy was like, hey, he lost. <laughs> and he was like, what do you mean I'm a loss? And he's like, what are you doing? Hey, you shouldn't be here, should you? And he's like, mate, I've lived here 25 years. <laughs> like, you know, like, what What am I meant to do? <laughs> like, I've got a business, up, you know, and uh, and then he said to him, like, 
if you'd lived 25 years in Chopu, would you think you could go and paddle out to the peak? And he said, the guy's like, no, no, that's different. Isn't it? That's different. He's like, it's not different no. at all. Like, you know. Yeah. So you did your, was that your first live podcast you did over there? No, I've done a few. I'm trying to think when I've done other ones. It's the first I've done for about three years. Yes. I've, I've done a few here and there. I did one at the Finisterre in London, like many moons ago. That was probably about five years ago. I did one in London for an event that I organized about three years ago. Yeah. It's the first since then, yeah. 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 How did you, well, it's always technical difficulty. <laughs> you know, when, you, uh, when you're doing a live one, something always goes wrong. Is it, uh, did it go? It was actually, it was actually all right because I was, I was over there. I'm doing some work with this brand called DB at the minute, basically, who sponsored my podcast. And, um, like we've been just trying to do like more interesting stuff than have an advert that you read yeah, out, yeah. you know what I mean? So this, this was one of them. Like they, they were doing this thing over there. Like they'd taken over this. Do you, do you, have you ever heard of that wasted talent? Do you know who they are? No, um, no. Uh, uh, like they're super like hipster magazine. Um, they're good, great lads. Um, but they've really like, they run a shop. They've got a magazine. They do campaigns for brands and stuff. Um, but they're well at the like former Mikey February, um, Alex Nost end of things. Yeah, right. It's like super hipster place. Yeah. And this brand had taken over that, this brand DB had taken over that s- space for like two weeks. And as part of that, they were like, do you want to come over and do a live podcast? Yeah. Um, That's good. Yeah. So I did, I did it with Capra Asero, who's a lovely, lovely man, yeah. a surf photographer called Krista Funk, who lives on the North shore wow. and is like, an absolute badass <laughs> who got, she's got a really interesting story cause she's like from Colorado and she's like been shooting surfing for like five years and she's already like top wow. of the totem pole. Yeah, no, that's a, pipe and back that's door. a competitive uh, industry as well, isn't it? Yeah. She's got a great story, like how she's ended up in that position. And then there's a snowboarder, a guy called Sage Kotzenberg who uh, won the 2014 Olympics. And then there was a guy called Tim Myers, who's uh an Aussie skier who is like a photojournalist and he's quite a renowned cameraman. Yeah. He does like proper, like he got attacked at the um, Black Lives Matter riot, what, like two years ago in Washington while he was filming live on air. You know, he's like got all these like crazy war stories. So I interviewed the, the four of them um, in front of a, in front of a group of people and we recorded it. And uh, yeah, I kind of said to him, to your point, like, can you, can you get a sound man? Because yeah. like, I, I I don't want to be fucking around with that really because it's it's already like quite stressful, isn't it? Yeah, when you, that's when you sort what of I learned. Try to do that without... one, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so they did, and he was he was French, and he was he was good. Like he he, he saw it out. Oh, that's good, man. Um, but we did it like at the, when it was like the absolute height of that heat wave. So it was did it at eight o'clock at night, and it was still forty degrees. Oh, oh Jesus, oh, painful. Uh, yeah it was pretty painful actually yeah uncomfortable it, it, yeah yeah we went and ran out and got a load of like aircon units and fans which probably lowered it like two degrees <laughs> but um no. it's pretty minging yeah. gotta say but yeah it's good it's good so I was, there, I was there for a week i did and then i did four of the podcasts um with those four like i did separate ones yeah. with yeah. them content uh, content content yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think I was over there with my friend Owen, who I did that book with that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. And I think we're going to do a little little zine or something yeah. off the back of that as well, because he got a load of stuff. And yeah, we got we got enough to do oh, something. Cool. So yeah, it was good. Well, talk, talking about the book, so you sent us the book. It's a beautiful, we got it right here. It's an absolutely beautiful book. And we were saying earlier, weren't we? It's like, it's like the perfect coffee table book. Some of the people that you've interviewed as well, like, is just... My favourite skater of all time, Jamie Thomas. Yeah, and I'm like, so is there anyone that you've been properly starstruck from when you've come to interview them? Um, Well, I think think Jamie Thomas was intimidating, for sure. Like, because he is is a total alpha. And um, he's a great, he's a lovely guy and he treated us really well. Um, But he did a funny thing because, so that trip, we I was we were there three weeks and we were trying to do I think we did I think I did like seventeen podcasts on that trip. So it's pretty fucking yeah. it's pretty hectic. Yeah. Um and I was also, you know, producing it. it's probably a bit of a wanky word for it, but like organizing it, you know, 
try to book the guests. I, I'd sorted all the travel. I'd sorted because we did that with the California tourist board that trip. So there's a lot of admin. Yeah. Let's put it that mm-hmm. way. And the way it sort of panned out was like Owen would drive there because we just spent three weeks basically going up and down the the you know the highway between like and like Ventura and Tanitas like because I tried to schedule them logically and obviously everyone kept changing plans so it'd be like oh fuck we've got to drive two hours back that way now and and I would end up prepping for the interviews on my phone essentially while Owen was driving. Yeah. And then I would drive back so he could shoot stuff. So we kind of got into this routine. And I, I forgot to tell Jamie that Owen was coming. Yep. Um, so I was texting Jamie and he was like, I need to do it at uh, 7.30 a.m. because I'm going on holiday. So we had we had like an a hour and a half drive to get there for half seven. So we were, we were pretty, and we were both a bit like, oh, fucking hell, Jamie Thomas, eh? oh, how's this going to go? <laughs> And then we got there and I, I said, I was like, this is Owen. And he sort of looked at me and went, you didn't tell me you were bringing a photographer. And I was like, oh yeah, sorry about that. And he sort of went, hello, Owen. Oh. Like, like, <laughs> quite quite aggressively. And we were a bit like, I was a bit like, sorry, sorry, Jamie. <laughs> like he's, he's all right, really. Um, but, but he, he was cool. He, like he, he's, he's definitely one of those people that, you know, he's got the full eye contact, yes. you know, he's like the firm handshake. Yeah. He wants, he wants to, he wants to test you, you know, yeah. a little bit. So I was intimidated, but that was probably the most rewarding interview I've ever done. I would say, because firstly, like he'd really kind of obviously done his homework about it. Like he'd obviously listened to it and he, he can't, you know, cause what I do is obviously it's not the nine club. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean, it's yeah. like, yeah. it's a bit, it's a bit more, it's a bit more uh, chin strokey. And he just turned up for that. And then he immediately started, he, he kind of really opened up about like mental health struggles. And he's, you know, he was talking about the fact he had a, he'd had a midlife crisis and he was falling out of love with skateboarding. Yeah. And, and this in like the first 10 minutes. So I was like, I was like, fuck, this is, this is good. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is, we've got a good, we've got a good one here. So I was like furiously looking at the recorder, like praying it was working. Yeah, yeah. And he seemed to, he seemed to get a lot out of it. Like he seemed to really enjoy it as well. So mm. it was a good, it was a good experience. It was like, it was a good one, but he was definitely pretty intimidating. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, I suppose that the way that he opened up to you is, is down to well, your credit really as a, as an interviewer to put him at ease. I know that, that's something that we've been desperately trying to, to master. It's making somebody feel relaxed, isn't it? And like that you're not intimidating and this is, this isn't an intimidating scenario. This is just a chat, which is fully editable and you can say whatever you like. Yeah. Cause on the, on the same thing, I think one time we felt really intimidated was um, we spoke to Hugo from the SAS surface. Against yeah, Hugo yeah. Tycho, yeah. yeah. And I know Hugo. He yeah. came on and he went, right, I've got half an hour guys. So let's go. And we, that's like, the first Whoa. time that's <laughs> happened to us. And we're like, right. shit, half an hour. Um, what do I ask? Get you, go into it, into yeah. Panic, yeah. you know, but Hugo's a, Hugo's a force of nature though. I mean, he's, in, he's such an impressive man. Yeah. I mean, I, I lucky enough to count him as a pretty good mate these days. Yeah. And I remember doing, I remember they did a launch in London. It's pre pandemic. So it's probably again, three years ago. You know, they did a classic like houses of parliament, big fucking inflatable turd, everyone in wetsuits, you know, that, that, that vibe. Right. And he, so he was like, do you want to come up? And I, cause I was interviewing him actually for my, I do this podcast for Patagonia. So I was interviewing him for that. And I was just blown away actually by Hugo that day because we got there and there was like MPs, press, blah blah you know he does he does the whole thing in his wetsuit yeah. then then he was like right quick coffee right matt i'll we'll, we'll all right i've got i've got an hour for you now we went and literally found a bench in the park and did this podcast and i said what else have you got on for the rest of the day and he's like well i've got to give a speech in the city at some like you know massive corporate yeah. thing <laughs> so i'm gonna get changed into the suit i've got to write my speech and i was like When's when when is it? He was like, it's in about an hour and a half. Jeez, <laughs> fucking hell! Okay, oh, that speech would then, have been amazing as well. And then and then he's like, and then and they said, and then I'm back here for the the presentation in front front of the House of Commons committee later, and I, which I went to as well, and which he then did another massive speech in front of. Yeah. I was like, fucking hell, man! Yeah, like that is so impressive. Well, because yeah. all that stuff is is just really like mentally draining, isn't it? Yeah. And, 
And yeah, that makes it really great. is. Yeah, so that, that's what I mean. Like that was that's I knew when he said it. We've got, I've got half an hour. It was like uh, not I've got half an hour because I don't want to talk to you. It's I've got half an hour because I've got other shit to do as well. Yeah, and yeah. Like, like, yeah, you know, you're like don't don't the, waste but, this yeah, time. Don't, the, don't waste this time. You know, the you first do. time someone's done like if someone did that now, we'd be like, yeah, all right, crack on with it. But that was like. That was near the beginning, wasn't it? And it was one of the first times someone done that. And it was like, whoa, like straight into panic mode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that still happens though all the time. Like I've, like, I think I, I kind of thought I'd get, I don't, I don't especially get nervous, but I definitely get like, you know, butterflies and yeah. it's, you know, it's just, you, you just, you just have to sort of be in the right frame of mind for it. Don't you? If yeah. you're going to interview yeah. somebody, especially like remotely, yeah. Um, and I, I still, I still have that like apprehension for the first five minutes. I don't think that's ever going to go. Yeah. Anywhere. I'm glad you said that because, like, because we're obviously fans and we li- we listen, and you're always so professional. You always know what to say. Not and like it, us. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not like us at all. <laughs> uh, so you have inspired us to to try and be be better uh, um, at it. But you, like, like you said, you get a bit anxious because you just never know the reaction of the person you're interviewing. Yeah, they might take something. Yeah a little bit the wrong way uh, but you still want to ask the question because you know the listeners would want to know or would ask that question yeah i think the other funny thing that i've realized as well is that um it's so i interviewed sean thompson the other week and he that was brilliant like, by the way that one thank you like and he he was that was quite random because i like i saw him on I, I told the story on the podcast but i saw him on the pipe you know, uh, broadcast and he's just such a legend. And I was like, Oh, what, what fucking, you know, obviously he's a legend, but when I saw him, like, like how he was, I was like, oh, I'd l- love to chat to him. So I emailed him and he literally got back to me within like a minute. Yeah. Like I'm in, you know, cause he's really good at self promo yeah. basically, you know, like he's got a book to sell at the minute. He's a pro, yeah. like he's a seller, like he does his, he does his sales. So in that situation, I think as an interview, you've got a challenge, haven't you? Because he didn't really know what it was. <laughs> like why would he you know it's just some podcast in the uk and he's he's got an agenda like he's he's got to he's trying to sell the book like if he did if it had been up to him he would have talked about about that book for an hour like no doubt about that um and i'm not dissing him that's just that's just how he's achieved such success he's super focused he knows like how to shape the story that he wants to tell so obviously my job in that situation is to not let him do that Mm. but also get enough trust quickly that he will be like, oh, this guy's actually knows what he's doing and I'm comfortable to to sort of do that. And I always think it's quite funny with the really famous people because I don't I don't really go for really famous people anymore yeah. because they're just they're, they're generally so busy that they just want, you know, and they're gonna try and sell something. Yeah. I mean that's the deal. Yeah. Um so that was I think you've got like 15 minutes max. Like if you can't crack it in that 15 minutes it's, it's, it's done yeah. here, you know so have you um, have you ever had uh, an interview that's gone badly or that you weren't happy with um you don't have you to don't have to, you don't have to name them. <laughs> yeah no i don't i don't mind i've talked to i'm pretty if you listen to my podcast you know i'm pretty open about all this stuff um i mean mikey february was a lovely man lovely lovely man but it it wasn't the most insightful interview in the world right. and again you know he he like just didn't know what it was and turned up and just sort of fulfilled his obligations and had a had a very nice chat about surfing but it wasn't very you know um that's my dog sure. sorry about that um it uh it wasn't very revelatory or insightful and i got a few people that were like quite peeved about that like listeners that were a bit like you know it's like listening to you interview a footballer yeah, yeah. and i was like okay you know i think the one that everyone probably that listens to it will remember is the alex nost one um who's like the you know the incredibly good surfer Mm -hmm. from i think he's from san diego um you know he's like super progressive longboarder and and he 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 was just a bit of a dick really (laughs) like and like i'd heard he so that was at london surf film festival and he was over Mm -hmm. to um to to show his film there and you know he obviously didn't want to do it like the organizers of that are good mates of mine. So they were like, we've got Alex here. Come up, come up. So we, me and Owen, the photographer that I worked with went into it thinking, Oh, this will be cool. And it just became quite apparent within like 30 seconds that he just didn't want to be there. And he's also got that thing where he fancies himself as a bit of an artiste. So like he, he, 
he was trying to like quite purposefully be a be a bit of bit obtuse and a bit awkward, right, you know, yeah. in the interview. Like he's um, kind of mysterious. Yeah, and and I was in the end we cut it short because because he was I, I kind of thought like you know what, this is actually fine because it's representative of who he mm-hmm. is, like which is supposed to be the point of these things. Yeah, yeah. But then he was a bit of a dick to Owen. He was a bit rude. And then he was a bit rude that night at the London Surf Film Festival on stage. You know, he was a bit, he made he made a bit of a joke at the expense of the friend of mine that runs it. Oh, right. And at that point I was like, okay, you are actually just a bit of a yeah. dick. Yeah. You know, but then but then afterwards I was like, but he's like 25 you know, yeah. like, and maybe he was, cause, so I, I, like I did a, I did an initial sort of intro and outro to the podcast and I'll be honest, I had a massive rant about him <laughs> and I played it to Owen and he was like, yeah, you don't want to put that out. You sound, you sound like, you sound a bit dickish yeah. really, you know? So, so I was like, okay, cool. So I redid it and, and I was, I was a bit more measured. I kind of basically said what I've just said yeah, here. Yeah. Um, but then since then, I just sort of, I thought, well, he's pro- he just is a, quite a young lad, really. Yeah. You know, he's 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 like got. So I probably would put it down to that. I actually think he was quite nervous. Yeah. Like yeah, looking um, back, I actually think I actually think probably. the whole the whole thing was was kind of a bit of front because he was finding the whole thing quite stressful. So mm. I kind of regret not. So the only times I've sort of taken it on the ego a little yeah. bit. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like and 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 gone like you fucking dick. Like, how dare you yeah. not like, yeah. not yeah. like treat, treat me like Michael Parkinson. Your outro <laughs> you know I mean? starts with, and thanks for that. You fucking prick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I can't, that that's one. And I've had, a, like I put that on YouTube and I've had, I, I mean, you know, YouTube is obviously not, never read the comments, yeah, no. um, <laughs> but every, every, like every, like two months I get a comment from someone that's found it on YouTube. That's kind of saying to me, wow, you're a dick mate. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, well, it's probably a, probably six, one half doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, really? That, that's probably the one that, that, that stands out. But generally, yeah, I feel pretty lucky with it. Really. Yeah. I think, um, I think it's, I think they've, they've, I'd hope they've all kind of had something pretty revealing about yeah, it. Yeah. 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 So if you've got anyone that you probably get asked this a lot, have you got anyone on the list where you'd go, if I could get that person, that's, that's one person I'd really want to go. For. Well, I've really wanted to interview Stacey Peralta for a long time. Yeah. Like, is it, is it the London think, film first? Is he there? Yeah. He's going to be over. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I've, and I think I've got that teed oh, up. Nice. Wow. Wow. Um, so I'm pretty hyped on that. Cause obviously he's just, so influential yeah. and so well, he's creative skateboarding isn't he he is skateboarding basically yeah and then and then the filmmaking yeah you know like dogtown z boys obviously like riding giants yeah. he well, i can't i was watching the trailer for the jerry one the other night and and thinking again like he's it just looks amazing yeah. doesn't it you know it, lo- it, it looks so good yeah. <laughs> i was like i was blown away actually yeah. so i'm really looking forward to that oh, yeah, that's yeah. Great. Um, listen to yeah, I looked at it. Is he's going to be there? Is Jerry going to be there as well? I think so. Um, and also, to be honest, with that, I just thought, well, fuck me, Jerry Lopez is going to be doing like every interview in town, yeah. promoting his film for like a month. Mm. They're all going to be quite same, yeah. aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of those things, isn't it? It's just, there's sort of if you speak to someone like that, you'd want to speak to him when he's got nothing else on and he's not, you know, he's not yeah. promoting anything and you're just going to get to chat to him about his, his life, his and, whole yeah, life. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I mean, he lives in Bend in Oregon. Yeah. Um, cause he's super into his snowboarding and I've got friends over there that I've been meaning to visit for years. So I kind of think I'll try and do it that yeah. way, you know, like meet, meet him on the, on that turf. Cause Again, I think it might be a bit more interesting to to interview him in the context yeah, of snowboarding. I, I rather than surfing. He's been asked uh, every surfing question he could ever be asked about. Yeah. You know, I bet there's less people that know about the snowboarding as well. Yeah, you just you see it on well, his yeah, he runs here. a comp over there every year, right. um, which is like I can't remember what it's called now, but it's essentially he runs what is essentially a surf comp on snow. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's you know it's like best turn, you know best transition. Yeah. It's cool, yeah, yeah. Like, and it's it's a bit of a pilgrimage for for the American snowboard right. scene. 
So I think that, and, and it's sponsored by Patagonia, so it could could be an option yeah, that's for cool. sure. I, especially, I can't wait to listen to Stacey Peralta if you manage to uh, get that one. That's uh, you know, I, I like I say, I listen, I listen to Nine Club and I well, watch Nine Club stuff all the time and stuff like that. Mm. And it's just there's there's certain people, isn't there? And he's just he's just absolutely well. You know, he's, he's started the Bones Brigade. You know, stuff like that. It's, no, you know, yeah. it's just. I know that it's it's amazing, isn't yeah. it? I'm trying to think, who else? Um, I've actually got a list. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like You've a, got a wish list. <laughs> yeah, I get the feeling now, well, like with with like the amount of people that you've interviewed, and then like the the level that those people are at, that you can pretty much get wherever you like now. Ah, uh, no, that's definitely not true. <laughs> <laughs> no well for example i've been trying to interview ian walsh right. for for you know the big wave surf from hawaii yeah. um for a, a year i got an amazing intro as well by a really close mutual friend and he was initially like super keen he's like yeah sounds good and then he's just been ghosting me for the last night oh months. we get uh, that that's it's, it's yeah when they're, think, when, like, when they're keen and you think oh amazing this is going to be great and you start prepping and then you don't hear from him again. You send multiple messages and you're like, it just when? says scene. Yeah. Yeah. It just says <laughs> scene. Yeah. And, and you're like, yeah, and that's the it, worst. Isn't it? The old scene. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, where does it cross over into, I'm just making sure, or I'm just actually, you know, pestering him. Like, I'm just a stalker. Now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, another one that gets requested a lot is Tom Penny. Yeah. yeah. And so I, I don't know him that well, but I'm pretty pally with Mons from SS20. Yeah. And, He's he listens to the podcast, so he was he's emailed me a couple of times saying like I can get like Alex Maul and and Tom yeah. and Tom I was like fucking hell like that that would be that'd be quite terrifying I think really <laughs> you know for for a variety of reasons um, Alex Maul I got as far as sending him a microphone this is pre COVID when before people had things like Zencaster. Yeah. Um, so I used to actually like send people like USB mics because I've always been a bit geeky about the audio. Yeah, nice. um, so I sent him a USB mic to California, which is obviously like a little bit of a hassle to yeah. be honest. And he's like, yeah, got it. Got it. Nice one, mate. He's super chatty. And then just went silent for like a year. <laughs> Where's <laughs> the fucking like, mic? Yeah. <laughs> I still, he still got it, I think, because then he, then he, then he popped up again about three months ago. Mm. Because Mon-, Mon had obviously reminded him, and he came back and said, "Oh, mate, I'm so sorry. You know, I'm up for it." I was like, "You still got that mic?" He's like, "Yeah, I still got the mic." <laughs> I was <laughs> like, "Sending you another one." <laughs> so he was like, I- "I'll definitely do it at some point, but I'm-, I'm just about to go away in the van for like three months, so I'll, I'll let you oh. know." So he's been like, he's like tantalizing, yeah. Yeah. you know. Yeah, it cause... better be a good interview after that. You're thinking <laughs> you better give me some stuff after that. <laughs> but I think. To be honest, like these days, because I'm pretty lucky with the fact that people do quite like yeah. it, like, and that I've tended to just trust my own idea about what a good story yeah, is. Absolutely, to be yeah, yeah. You know, like like the the lad I've got on this week, Tim Myers, the guy I interviewed in Hossegor, It's just a great tale. Yeah. Like you know, it's a really really interesting tale, and he tells it really well. Yeah. And I think if you're into the whole you know, life hacking, life tip bollocks yeah, yeah. that tends to underpin a lot of these podcasts that are really popular. Then there'll be, there's loads of that. Like he's got some great life lessons and all that. Yeah. I mean, I don't tend to sort of go down that road really, but, and I think when I started doing it, I wouldn't, I would have not done that because I would have thought well, no one's heard of him. Yeah, so yeah. no one's going to listen to it. But so that's quite a nice position to be in these days to, to, to sort of follow that follow my nose on what I think might be interesting generally, yeah, yeah. you know, rather than like, Oh fuck, I better get this person on. Cause he's really famous. Yeah. Cause so, I'm, yeah. I suppose like not all the listeners want to listen to mega famous people. Like they're, they're more relatable, aren't they? There's the, the normal people that are into the sport that you're into are more relatable. I think so. I, I know he's kind of, um, I don't know if you class him as famous, but known, but, uh, James Otter, like the interview you did with him. Oh, I love James. And did like a, like a really, chilled like, i can remember listening to it and thinking I, f- I feel like i'm in the room with you two because you actually went there didn't you and he was showing you around the workshop and stuff and it just yeah it's it great set this beautiful 
feeling. Yeah, he's a lovely man. Pez. Yeah, he does sound really nice. Comes across really cool. Well, he's, and again, just a great story. I mean, what a thing that he's created yeah. there. Just because he looked just like everybody, you know, they were all sort of doing this, everyone, because you try to go surfing, skateboarding, snowboarding more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, that's the point, yeah. you know. And um, and he's that's been his way of doing mm. that. You know, and it's it's incredible. Like what what a thing. Yeah, and that you know what he's creating is beautiful. So I'm um I'm in the timber industry. I'm a joiner as well, and I think I've chatted to him a, a few times. He's all like, "Yeah, come on down. I'll show around the workshop." So I'm just kind of blown away with like how beautiful the boards are and how much yeah they're amazing. care and attention he's taking into the products he uses and how he's doing it. And yeah, they do, they do look beautiful. Yeah, yeah, defo. Yeah. So um, what's, what's the Patagonia part of the podcast that you do? Uh, so that came about, um, so how'd that come about? So I, so I set up looking sideways in as a podcast cause it actually existed before that, um, as a brand, we used to, we used to make art shows and put on different events and work with brands and stuff. And then we sort of, so that was about 10 years ago. Uh, and that was with this lad, Owen, that I, uh, that I mentioned earlier. See, he's the photographer that I work with. He designed the logo and like he, he kind of came up with the whole branding. Yeah. Anyway, that we parked it until 2017. And then I had this idea to do this podcast and I spoke to him about it and he was like, Oh, you should resurrect all the looking sideways brand and logos. Cause it's perfect for mm-hmm. it. And he was like, you know, we're not using it very generously. There was three of us involved in that. Um, and the other two very generously said to me like, just you know it's been dormant for five years just just use yeah. it so i started it in february 2017 and from the beginning i was a real dickhead about ads like um kind of really made this rod for my own back really yeah. because i kind of went on about how shit podcast adverts were and um, <laughs> i think we got the same thought actually because <laughs> we did the same thing at the beginning about podcast ads and then we got some, like, I think uh, it was North Core, first of all, started. And then Manscapes got in touch. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's that yeah. thing, though. Like, and they get in touch and they go, well, can, uh, we're like, well, we don't want to do, we don't want to run adverts. Like, you know, you don't want to do an actual advert, like going, no, hey, so no, 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 no. You're like, oh, it's, and yeah. you skip it's anyway. so bad. But, well, we're British. Yeah. Like, the idea that we can, that we can, like, with a straight face, go like, let me tell you about this amazing new spoon that i just got you know like <laughs> they're just so silly yeah. aren't they so i was like i'm not gonna do that and i'm quite lucky because i've got a, a day job which um so i didn't need to do this for, for i didn't need, really need to worry about earning money from yeah. it so i thought well i'll just see what comes along with it and after about a year um i'm through my day job, I'm already quite friendly with the people at Patagonia and they got in touch and they were like, well, we really like what you do. I want to get involved. And I think initially they might've said that they wanted to sponsor it. And I said, no, you know, well, gave them the ads of shit. (laughs) Um, and so then they were like, well, let's, they were amazing actually, because they, they would, and it was quite an insight into how that company must have achieved the position that they have because, they were very much like we're not in a rush. Like, you know, we just want to come up with a decent idea yeah. really. Um, so in the end we, we came up with this, we decided to s- set up a slightly separate podcast, which is called type two, mm-hmm. um, which still comes out on my feed. So if you subscribe to it, you get it every four to six weeks. It just pops up, but it's branded differently. It's a little bit different. It's essentially still me interviewing people. Mm-hmm. Um, but that it's more people with a sustainability or activism background. Yeah. And it's a bit, it's a bit more like what lessons you can glean from, from people that are, that are in that arena. So, um, the last one, the last one I did actually was with Adam Hall. I don't know if you know, Adam who lives in, lives in Croyd. Um, he's one of the people that just got this world surfing reserve yeah, off the ground. Um, yeah. I was thinking then the name rings a bell. Yeah. Yeah, because they yeah. got awarded so, that recently, didn't they? Well, in the last few. Yeah, and and he's he's like with a group of people from Croyd, been working that for like two years, yeah, really. Like they've been an absolute mission. Yeah. So I spoke. So so for that one, like I spoke to him about that, and it was it was more about like how he's using surfing and his position because he's got quite a good job at Surf Dome, um, to be an activist, yeah. if you like. Yeah. 
you know like so so yeah so that so that set that up that'll be four years ago the patagonia right, yeah. um and i th- actually know that we first started talking four years ago and it came out three years ago yeah, yeah and um so yeah i've just been trying to do more stuff like that really yeah like that's why i'm quite into this thing i've got going on with um with this brand db because what we decided to do with them was we did the live podcast but we've we've created a fund basically Mm -hmm, like which is like the looking sideways db fund essentially we've got a pot of cash um and we're running this this fund to try and find um, like a new generation of like people that have got stories to tell yeah, cool. and trying to help them get into the industry. Right. Oh, so, that's really cool. Yeah. Like podcasters, filmers, journalists, because you know, it's like when you have an idea and you're a bit younger, you don't really know how to start. Yeah, yeah. I know. So mm. um, especially when you try to get into something as bizarro as like the British surf industry, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, which is, or even even more weird, the British snowboard yeah. industry. Um, so, I, you know, we decided that again, rather than do like an ad, yeah. like we would come up with something that was just a bit more interesting and that hopefully will will be of more general benefit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Than than me reading out some dickish <laughs> script. Yeah. Well, we, that's what I was going to say. We've we got approached if we wanted an, to put an ad on I was like not really no but talking about I don't I don't mind talking about brands because like we've got like a deal with North Core where they'll send us stuff yeah. to talk about and we can tell people what we've used mm. what we think of it and we're pretty honest as well if it's if it's shit we'll say it's shit and what, what, what's yeah, the yeah. it's like there's a lot of surfers that have started their own brand you know and um so, so we'll get t-shirts sent, won't we? And then we read them oh, out on the podcast. I'm actually wearing one right now. Yeah, coasting one. So yeah, and like, you know, and that that's that's cool. Like like you said, the um, the guy who's doing the 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 surf reserve thing, you know, that he's doing that off his own back. You find that people in surfing and skateboarding, and snowboarding, because they've got a passion for it, they've always got something else going on with it to help to yeah. help the thing they love. And we yeah. discovered that like more than ever by doing this. That I think that's been like the takeaway thing. Well, yeah, so it's, many people. It's like what you were saying. So they can just be in it twenty four seven. Yeah, it's just basically. immersed in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a it, it's a powerful thing for people, isn't it? I mean, it does. Like, I mean, I weirdly I've de- dedicated my life to it. You know, like I mean, that is, and not really intentionally mm. at all. Yeah. Like, it's not like I sat down when I was eighteen and was like, oh, I'm gonna, you know, end up doing yeah. like obviously that's just not how it happened but you know the decisions that you make and the and that with me it was really like i want to go snowboarding with my mates like <laughs> yeah. in my 20s like it literally was that was it and i was lucky enough that i had a few pretty decent opportunities because i was a journalist and i like at the time there wasn't you know <laughs> there wasn't many people that were that were also doing that yeah. so i could i could i could sort of at the same time start to create a, a little bit of a career in inverted commas mm. for myself but pretty much every every decision that i've made like has been in f- like professionally and financially mm-hmm. has been about going snowboarding and surfing <laughs> more, really if i'm if i'm being I, I know it sounds like a bit of a line but it is true uh, really i know i know exactly what you mean like uh, like even down to like things of like going away like you were saying just before the first pandemic, you're away. I was in Barcelona the week before that, skating with my mates, and I was like, "Oh shit, this is getting a bit serious." You know, like, yeah, oh, fucking hell, we might not be able to get a plane back. And I think um, another guy I know, um, he got the last, the literally the last plane that left Spain, and he was on it. And then they were like, "That ah, right, no more." <laughs> That's yeah, it. Like, luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if he was, I was speaking to somebody that got stuck in Australia the other day like you know i mean it was you forget you forget now don't you like two years later it was it was very hectic have you found it a lot more difficult or easier like with the podcast through the pandemic because through the pandemic it seemed to be everyone had loads of time anyone you asked they'd be like yeah sure why not i got got fuck all else to do today yeah the thing we struggled with is because there's two of us hosting and we had to be in separate houses we did a thing and we were it was like a three-way link which it's right, a flipping nightmare. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, because we were recording 
so now we do it now Zencast has changed we do it with like video so we can see you but we just record the audio before yeah. we were recording audio only with nothing on the screen We'd yeah, then be right. face- I did a few like We'd that. We'd then be yeah. FaceTiming each other, like <laughs> right while the screens go. Oh, it's a nightmare. It was, it was a nightmare. nightmare. Yeah, I mean, I was always like super hardline about not about always doing them in person before the pandemic. Yeah. I think I'd done about two, like remotely, um, and and then obviously couldn't do it. So I did. I did start doing them remotely. Um, yeah, I think the main thing is is just way more podcasts, aren't yeah. there? You know, when I when I when I started doing mine, it was there wasn't that many. Yeah. I don't think um, there was the nine. Actually, I think the nine club might start at the same time, and you know, like there just there just wasn't that many. So it was. I think it's definitely harder to book guests now, just because there's so many. Yeah. Um, and also, people have just got way more choice, haven't they? Yeah. Um, I mean, Beach Grit do about five, don't they? Yeah, yeah. And uh, like Surf Splendor do about eight. You know, there's 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 a, there's a lot of choice in there. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, right. Wow. Yeah, well, yeah, and then so if you make it easier for the people you're interviewing by doing it remotely, you have got more chance of getting the people to on the on the show, haven't you? You know, so yeah, yeah, exactly. And I do think you're right. I think at the beginning of the first lockdown, yeah, there was loads of people I'd been trying to get for ages. You were suddenly very available. <laughs> you know, they were all like, oh yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. I've got else going on. So um. So, like your kind of introduction into board sports, and um, was that snowboarding? Was that the first love? Skating and then snowboarding. Did the sort of classic British season air thing. I got a job at a snowboard magazine when I was pretty young, like when I was like, I think I was like twenty, maybe. Oh, dream job. And um, some friend. Basically, I grew up with a load of lads from the northwest who were who were really good at snowboarding. Yeah. Like there, there was, there was a group of us that used to like, they're a bit older than me. So I sort of came onto this a little bit later, but they all used to um, ride at this dry stop called Rosendale in the Northwest. They all got really good. They all started like this all sort of coincided with the, an industry like starting to form in the UK. So people started to import board brands mm-hmm. and people started magazines. And I mean, there's probably only about 200 people actually snowboarding in, in the UK at the time but they were all trying to like make it a thing, yeah, you yeah. know? And, and this group of friends of mine were like the first generation of like pretty decent British snowboarders. And then I was part of that wider group. You know, I could ride, but I was never like going to get sponsored or anything mm-hmm. like that. And like, I just ended up, I got asked to write a mate's interview for a magazine mm-hmm. um, when I was probably 19. And then because there was literally no one else doing it, like this magazine, we're like, well, that's cool. Do you want to do some more stuff? So I kind of went from oh, there. Really. Um, and then we, yeah. And then I moved out to the, like, since I was at university, as soon as I finished university, I, like I just went and did loads of seasons. Yeah. And then I did, I did about 10, 10 seasons probably. And um, when I was running, when we were like, me and a group of friends were running that magazine and yeah, it was fucking great yeah. <laughs> that's what i was <laughs> saying it's, it's amazing yeah it's a good laugh did you do that same thing of going oh i can snowboard and i can skate i'll be able to surf easy no i mean surfing yeah got into surfing like probably started surfing realistically when i was in my early 20s mm-hmm. and no never found it easy um <laughs> like and didn't really <laughs> Didn't didn't really properly start surfing until I was like late twenties, probably like twenty seven, twenty eight. I'm forty six now, so I guess it's like twenty years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just absolutely loved it. Like I'm 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 quite into swimming geekily, so I was I was quite fit, like and could so like getting out paddling was never really a problem. Yeah. Like it was it was more, and I was quite comfortable in the water. I was quite comfortable like reading waves but so it's just the actual surfing bit <laughs> <laughs> the main bit the bit but you say, no, say the main bit you're, what you're surfing for like seconds yeah seconds yeah, 10 yeah. 20 30 seconds you know you certainly you actually stood up on the board forever but yeah. you know yeah so we're so we're like that same group of the british snowboard community is like a real close-knit group like and a lot of us moved to brighton essentially uh, like in between seasons great, this great is how come, board in this, there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well like exactly yeah so but it was like in the summers and it's close to gatwick yeah um and i was doing a lot of traveling back then i was away like six months a year easy so 
we all and just and we you know we will all love getting pissed so brighton seemed like a good yeah. a good spot um and and then and then i got when it, when those seasons started to tail off as it like as i just started doing a few different things like then that's when i sort of got super into surfing and um and yeah i've been stoked on it ever since really cool. yeah yeah. And what sort of uh, what's your go-to surfboard? What size? Oh, I'm like classic middle-aged, mid-length man. Oh, yeah. there you go. I, I do. I, I do own a seven six CI mini. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so yeah. I, well, we're, we're old as fuck now because we're on like nine six longboards. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's no, down longboard. down down there, I've I surf a longboard down there yeah. yeah. pretty much mostly. Like um, I've got like a what is it a nine? Yeah, it's nine foot longboard, and I I do because. I'm just not in the water often enough to to like expect to to turn up and surf a shortboard. Yeah. I, I've long accepted the fact that I'll yeah. that I'm never going to surf a thruster or a shortboard. I, I think I'm, the majority of UK surfers are in that kind of category as well. Actually, well, one of the first surf trips I ever did was to Bali in years ago, and I went with so a good friend of mine is Ed Lee, who's the Ski Sunday presenter. Yeah, yeah. And so we grew up, we, like, he's one of the people I used to run the, the snowboard magazine with. So he's one of the people I sort of grew up in my twenties, like traveling, mm-hmm. like snowboarding. He's one of my like really oldest, closest friends. Mm-hmm. And he's really good at surfing. He's like, he's one of those sport Billy twats. He's good at everything. He's good at everything. So he picked up surfing within like five minutes. <laughs> uh, I remember, I remember like when we all, he went down to Hosco did the summer season and like, years ago i just could surf and we were all like fucking hell all right um and we went to bali and this was a group of us ed was by far the best surfer this is this is me and the like the snowboard boys at the time like absolute coops yeah. absolute fuckwits <laughs> um so we go to, we go to bali we go to dreamland and i bought like a what now would be called a midlength but at the time was like a mini mal yeah. and was like terminally uncool um and we, so we surfed Dreamland and it was great. Like I, you know, super got into it and Ed goes, we should go to Lakey Peak. And, uh, and me and my mate Spencer were like, I don't know about that, Ed. I don't know if we're going to be good enough for that. Um, he convinced us to buy shortboards and, um, and fly to Lakey Peak. And needless to say, that did not go well. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember we, we were supposed to be at Lakey Peak for a week and, I, and, I, and also I'm a regular, which didn't help. Um, and we, I remember paddling out and going like, I am never going to get away from it and I should not be here. It's um, like so, paddling out in the surf and going, what the fucking hell am I doing here? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I, and I was, and so we got out and me and Spencer were like, Ed, Ed, what, what have you done? <laughs> <laughs> you know? So we just booked our flights back to Bali. Because <laughs> we, we were like, this is pointless, yeah. you know, we're, we're going to, cause I think we were supposed to stay for two weeks. Right. So, um, I had that short board for quite a few years. And I don't think I ever surfed. It ever. <laughs> <laughs> did did Ed, Ed manage to surf there? I can surf. Yeah. He's, he was charging. <sighs> yeah. Like, but he's, we still rib him about that now. Cause, cause he's obviously now 20 years later, he's mortified. Cause it, you know, it's like, it's the act of a selfish mid 20 year old. Isn't yeah, it? Yeah. That? Like lads, lads, come on. Yeah. Come watch me. Come <laughs> You'll be fine, lads. Come to Lake and Peak. It's, it's fucking hilarious. It's fucking hilarious, isn't it? So, but yeah, I surf a longboard down here, um, which I really enjoy. You know, like I like it's it's super cruisy, and then I've got a nice, um, I've got a nice, you know, like trendy fish, big big fat. Yeah, it's a six two thing, but it's got loads of volume. It's it's one of uh, Gulfstream Jules no, boards, right. um, um, and that's great. Cause I went to the Maldives last year i surfed that quite a lot and that was that was great yeah. um and then i've got i've got a foamy I've got a nice big foamy yeah. that, that i sometimes surf when it's tiny um i've actually got i've probably got way more boards than i should have really. <laughs> um, but you know that's that's the, that's also the deal yeah it? well yeah. as soon as you're like naming them you're thinking i've got a shitload of boards haven't i <laughs> yeah i was thinking then like yeah because there's a couple more i didn't mention but um and also in the maldives like i I was surfing my friends my friend's got this like single fin it's basically like a copy of the classic jerry lopez pipe board and um i surf that quite a lot and and on my on like on rights because because i think it's a nightmare on on your back end but um 
that was great. And I actually tried to buy it off him at the end of the trip and he's having none of it because he couldn't surf it because when he bought, he's like five stone heavier than when he had it made like 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, can I borrow that? He's like, yeah, I ain't going to be surfing it. Um, but still wouldn't and, it uh, Well, no, it's a beautiful thing. And, you know, I guess it's like the dream, isn't it? That one day he'll, he'll get back on it. But yeah, I, I, I do, I do really like, that was my mistake in Hossegore. Like I should have taken my midland, should have taken that seven, six. It would have been great, yeah. but yeah, I didn't. So to be go. honest, I, I've done the similar thing. I got a seven, six and I surfed it a bit. And I was getting on all right with it. And then I just all of a sudden started surfing a longboard and just really got into longboarding and just, oh, it's so fun. I just, I, I, love I just love the, the amount of time you've got on the board to do anything it's not even with that seven six everything's a little bit more rushed and you know you feel like you you've not got a lot of time you've got to get up quicker and stuff like that yeah with a long board you can you can go oh get up i might not get up i might just lay here actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean my my idea of a good time is like long boarding at saunter yeah. yeah like for yeah. sure like i absolutely love that wave yeah. and every time we go down to croyd I'm I'm doing the Edley at Lakey Peak thing. I'm like, come on, let's go <laughs> sort yeah. you know. Um, and you know, a lot of my I've got a few mates that are like were really good skaters and really good snowboarders who are still still ideologically do do not like the idea of longboarding right. because they feel like it. I had a mate say to me once, the "Thing about longboarding, you've just given up, haven't you?" And I was like, Fuck off, you dick! You can't even fucking. Can't even fucking surf. <laughs> like, what are you on about? You know, it's like it's so funny that those we're surfing, isn't it? Because it's such a self perception thing. Yeah, yeah. You know, like the 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 all time classic of you know how many people whose surfing experience would be improved if they just got a bigger board Definitely, and, yeah. and, and, and forgot what they think yeah. they should be yeah. surfing. And uh, and ultimately, um, that, you know, that's where the fun is, isn't it? It's it's not fun trying to surf something you know you can't surf it's just not fun because you just come away demoralized and frustrated where if you've got something you can surf you know just being up on the thing it doesn't really matter what you're riding is it as soon as you're on that glassy face and you're tracking yeah. along it that's that's all I, that's the only place i want to be you know i'm not worried about doing flipping cutbacks or anything like that i just want to yeah experience that like power that nature is kind of provided. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. I had a great week in um, Pembrokeshire last May with my wife and surf freshwater West got quite lucky with the like nice little bit of swell. Not, you know, not huge, probably like head mm-hmm. high um, and great wind and it was really sunny. And I, I, I had two days on that set CI mid seven, six. And that was just amazing. That was just so fun. Yeah. Like, and cause, cause there was no one really around. You could like actually relax a bit and, stop you yeah. know and i was i was like yeah this is i still sometimes get a wave and like i'm like quite surprised that i can actually surf if that doesn't sound yeah, too you mean, strange yeah. you're like oh i can't believe i stood up on that <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah sometimes i'm like that's fucking sick <laughs> you know that is <laughs> it's one of those things, and not it? not like i was sick just the experience yeah, yeah, sick, yeah. You know? it's one of those things that you you do it multiple multiple times and you'll go like Oh, that was all right, surf. That was yeah, it was a shit surf. Oh, I did, caught one good one, caught two one, two good ones. And every now and then you'll have that surf, and you'll be like, "Fucking hell, I can do this!" And then you go out again, and yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. But then on the flip side of that, <laughs> and then you go, and they go to hospital. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But on the flip side, then you have that that surf where you know you you should be able to surf this, and for some reason you can't. And like I've had that a lot this year. I've had a shocking year of it, and but I think that's you know down to your your headspace at the time. Like you, you yeah, I totally agree. I was about to say you that you can't go in with like almost like with other issues going on because if you're not fully committed to wanting to enjoy it, yeah, it's almost like you can't do it. It's really weird. I totally agree that with that, I, and I'm really susceptible to that as well. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm not. I've got a mate who has just been surfing maybe like eighteen months. Mm-hmm so he's a complete beginner um but his his uh, he's a really close friend of mine and he started surfing in lockdown in brighton he doesn't know anything about surf culture he doesn't know he, he doesn't care <laughs> he, but what he does know is that it's a really fucking good yeah. laugh um and and his his approach to surfing has actually really inspired me because he just doesn't care you know like he's been coming to the wave with us and surfing the advance which is like massively out of his comfort zone 
and and he'll have sessions where he literally doesn't get a wave like because he's just because he can't yeah. like but he just comes out of the water like beaming yeah you that's know? great and um and it's it's brilliant whereas like last week in Hossegor, and also we had this session in the maldives where like we turned up at this wave yin yangs which was probably like the shallowest wave that we surf and the guide our guide was a bit like yeah i don't know if i want to take you boys there because <laughs> he 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 thought we were hilarious i think he's used to like a boat full of like aussie rippers so when us coop turned up <laughs> he, he, he was loving it um anyway we get there and it's actually pretty good it's like pretty it's like again maybe head head and a half on the sets breaking quite shallow but and there's only one takeoff but there's like 30 guys in yeah. it was actually really friendly mm. It was actually because it was a load of like people, Euros from boats. Right. And there was one guy ripping, like really good surfer. And he actually paddled past us because, again, we were all sort of on the shoulder, like, you know, scared yeah, really, yeah. like of, of, of the wave and the, the, the situation. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I had a couple of mates out of our group that got totally stuck in. I've got one mate who is notoriously blinkered and will go on anything <laughs> and he's got got more snap leashes in it than anyone I've ever met. Um, and he was, he was going, you know, and this lad comes past, he's like, come on, come on boys, just get stuck in. And I, I, I just didn't do it really. And, and I just find myself like, once I get in my head like that, mm. there's not a lot I can do about it. Really. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I, I, I'm very aware of it. Like I'm very aware of, it's a mentality thing. Like you're saying, isn't it? It's like, it's it's a headspace thing, and that definitely happened in hot school last week. Did you well. get that with that headspace thing? Like, you have that thing of like, I'm running a podcast on this stuff now. I should be able to do this. People are watching me. Sort of. Mm. Do you ever get that sort of headspace of it? No, I don't get that. I just I think it's more like I'm just aware that like there's something that there's something about my mentality, and I think it's the same for all sports as well. Like I've played sport like my whole life. Like I played a lot of football. I have it in common with playing football as well. Like if I play football and I've played a lot of sort of competitive football over the years and it's never any good, but like, you know, love it. And I, and I still play a lot these days. Like if I, if I like within like the first few minutes, have a good touch or make a good pass or like, I'll have a good game yeah, really. Yeah. But if, if I don't, I, t- I won't have a good yeah, game I know what you like, mean, because yeah. I'll let, because I'll then be in my head and I'll be like, I'll just be starting to build things up to and creating problems for myself. It just, it's like you said, it just is a mentality thing, isn't it? And like, sometimes I'm better at, at, at changing that. Sometimes I'm better at ignoring Mm it. Um, but I think it is this, this ordeal really. And yeah, I I mean, it's just something I've learned about myself, I guess, like being, being the age I am. Yeah, Yeah. 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 I think that's, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, the, the, the older I get, the more that that saying of youth is wasted on the young is more. Yeah, <laughs> it's more ain't, like, ain't, it is. Ain't, ain't that the ain't that the truth? Yeah. yeah. Well, then you have the other thing, don't you? Of like that is ego as well, isn't it? Let's be honest. Yeah. Like that is like that is ego telling me that I should be able to just go and get away with that at that at that break. Yeah. But there's actually nothing wrong with like if I had to turn around and just which my other, one of my other friends did actually on that session in the Maldives, like he, he did just say, I'm not getting in lads. You know, it's too, it's too hectic for me. Yeah. And, and that takes a lot to do that. That does. But is it, but as if anyone judged yeah. him, like none of, none of us judged him. We were all like, oh, good, good decision. You know what? There's you know? a lot of times we should have done that at Putzborough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Turned around and gone, no. But that, that, um, <laughs> that's probably the hardest thing to do to, to be able to do that, especially when you're with a group of mates, like, it feels yeah. almost like it's hard to do that if you turned up at a break by yourself. If you you know rolled into the car park and just went nope, too big, and rolled out again, that still feels hard to do that. But to do it with a group of mates, especially if you're on holiday, it's real ego led stuff, isn't yeah. it? It's real like blokey stuff, yeah, really. Yeah. And I think those things are quite they're just so ingrained that that I mean, last week there was a lot of really good surfers in the water. And the fact of the matter is that I surf in Shoreham. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's, that's the deal. And I haven't really surfed much this year because I've been away a lot snowboarding and doing other stuff. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's actually quite silly really of me to to think that I should be able to, to, to turn up there and start fucking elbowing people out yeah. of the way on the peak <laughs> that have lived there. It's just, it's just, it's silly, yeah. but for whatever reason, like you, 
I certainly as like find it difficult not to get in my own head about that stuff. Really. Yeah. So ju- just to, before we wrap up, have you, what's new for the podcast? Have you got anything coming up that you're excited about? I know you said about interviewing Stacy, but have you got anything else? I know the books is volume one. So I'm assuming there's going to be more. Yeah, there's a few interesting things. I think we're going to go to Erisera in October and do another version of this thing we just did in Hossegor. Yeah. Um, so we're going to go and over there for a week. Um, my friend Mario owns a store over there called Magic Quiver. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna be based there and do something similar. I've got the fun thing that I mentioned, which I'm very hyped about. Like the book, we would like to do another volume. It it is a mission. Yeah. You know, you you need a three week trip. Really, you need to interview like twenty people. Yeah. And so, like, Owen really wants to go to Hawaii. Mm-hmm. And actually, Krista. The, the girl I was telling you about who we got on really well with, she did it. She did go and invite us to stay in Hawaii. And she actually said she'd take Owen out at pipeline to shoot, <laughs> which is <laughs> which fucking hilarious because he was like, he's like classic surf grom right. and his face was like, well, that's amazing, but also completely terrifying. Yeah. Um, it sounds like Owen so, has a pretty rough ride sometimes. You've got all these people like having a problem with him when you interview him. <laughs> now he's going to be chucked in one of the most lethal waves in the world. Uh, he he loved it. He was like saying to me, "We gotta go. We gotta go." <laughs> um, so I think I'm going to try and plan an, another one. But that is that is a real mission. Um, and since we did the California trip, like I'm quite involved in this quite big snowboarding event, which takes place in the states every year. Like I got a bit of a behind the scenes role, and I'm like one of the commentators for that. Nice. So that that's now like quite a big thing that's scheduled. Yep. Like that, that, and that I'm I'm normally there for three weeks. Right in wyoming on that event i'm actually going to try and do a live event at that um which is an idea that i've had for a while which is to do uh like a looking sideways live but where i work with somebody to like program a series of events over a few days so um so so for example stacy prowler would be dream material for that so like get get him to be curator interview him interview jerry lopez this is like fantasy yeah, idea yeah. you know um premiere the film photography exhibitions blah blah i've actually been speaking to the wave about this and they're they're super into it and they've actually said i can hire hire it for three days in october 23 right. oh, that'd be cool. wow. um, and like have 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 people on site bring somebody in have bands program everything so i'm i'm really going to try and do that yeah. um but I'm going to start off with a slightly smaller scale version at this snowboarding event, hopefully in, in Wyoming in January. Um, I mean, obviously there's a lot of that. That's as likely not to happen as it is to happen. But but that's something that I'm looking to try and do. There's something else as well. I can't remember. I'm sure it'll come back to me. Yeah. Well, good luck with all that stuff. That's just sounds incredible. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, well, thanks for having me. I really enjoyed yeah, that. Yeah. Right. What's uh, it like to be on the uh, the other end of the questions for a change? Uh, it's good. I really enjoyed it. It's mellow, yeah, isn't it? The, I mean, you, you, you boys said, like, ah, it's just a chat, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's good. That's, I, no, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, that's well, we we'll, we thank you as well for coming on. We were, like, super stoked that you were coming on because we're a fan of the podcast. Oh, well, that's really kind. Thank and I uh, hope you carry on doing it because they're fantastic. Much appreciated. Thanks for that, Matt. Lovely guy. <laughs> he was a lovely guy, he wasn't was he? Guy. He was, like... It seems like a, one of the guys. Uh, there's loads of stuff I wanted to talk to him about before I mean, and you, afterwards. It I could forgot. have been three or four episodes chatting to him. Yeah, I think like we chatted about loads of stuff even before we got into talking about him surfing. Once we got into talking about him surfing, I think we could have gone for another hour or two just yeah, on, yeah. like his surfing stories. And he's been like all over the world doing like he's this sort of really stuff. Really well connected, like to yeah. lots of people in every one of those industries in every one of those like board sport industries he's yeah. majorly connected yeah. so it's like this is what happens if you put in effort <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but no amazing guy amazing he's got really and, nice relaxing voice as well i don't know if it's like that bit of a northern twang he's got going on but it's really i know it just puts you at ease is it a northern twang yeah it's a bit of a northern twang though, isn't I thought it? it's like a bit more of a london twang no it's a northern twang was it yeah i don't know well like he will name, he will name message and yeah. go. No, I'm from yeah. Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> That's north. 
Yeah, I said Northern Twang. He's not from Newcastle. All oh, right, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why he's a professional and we're not. Yes. Because <laughs> he finds these things out, first yeah. of all. Um, yeah, but no, great. Cheers for that, Matt. It was uh, really pleasure to speak to you and yeah we are fans of the yeah, show so make sure quite you quite a lot of episodes yeah, yeah. Looking sideways podcast it's on spotify itunes youtube it's on everywhere so you can go and he's had some great great guests it on really there. has yeah. yeah yeah and he's he's really knows what he's doing so if you want to hear people that can interview well <laughs> and listen to matt's yeah. podcast <laughs> yeah listen to someone that does talk proper like um yeah but what you've been up to? Oh man, about it's just a shocker. I like oh. <laughs> so I, I shouldn't laugh. Oh, I, I I've had I'm re- like, I'm gonna be completely honest. I've totally fallen out with love with surfing at the moment. Really, I have not had one good surf session this whole year so far. Like so since Christmas, um, and and we we, we kind of mentioned uh, something in the last podcast. Um, and, and like Matt explained it quite well. It's like when you're getting in your own head and stuff. Yeah. Um, I've had, I've had quite a busy year, and so every yeah. single time I've gone to go surfing, it's not necessarily because I've wanted to. And that sounds really stupid because why wouldn't you want to go surfing? Yeah. But I've always had something else going on. Yeah, I feel it's like about top to of your priorities. It. Yeah, it's yeah. not not top of my priority. You know, new, new, new baby and like wedding coming, all this kind of stuff. Work is really busy, and so much leaks. Yeah. So like when when it's come to us to go I, the main reason i've gone is because we do this podcast and i feel like yeah. i got it um and so like an example of that was last weekend I, i've had covid for uh, at this point it was about eight days um and it's just like kind of showing negative but i've still as you well know like the yeah the after effects of covid fucking awful I, I can't believe how much it knocked me sideways like it was See, this is what, when you were saying to me afterwards, oh, if you try and do some exercise, you'll feel better. I was like, I fucking cannot do it. Yeah. I physically can. So what what happened was um, I had a, a session booked at a wave with my uh, with my eldest son and my youngest son went on a, like a, a beginner session, first of all. So we were there like all day. And because you wouldn't get a refund, because, you know, I'm not feeling well kind of thing, yeah. I, I, I went because I'm tight with money. So. Yeah. But honestly, like I went to wax at my board and I was out of breath. Like yeah. it, that's that's how bad COVID had, had affected my um, ability to be able to do anything. Yeah. And really, what I should have done is like what Matt said in in that um, interview. Then he should have said, "Well, I'm not going to go in," you yeah. know, because ultimately what happened was the worst fucking surf I've had in my entire life. So I come away. Like, I, I could have thrown a full-on hissy fit in the wave. Like, I was furious. <laughs> you, you rang me up afterwards. It was even better. And you went, oh, we're going to have to stop doing this fucking podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I, do you know what made it even worse? The reason I said that is because what made it even worse was I got recognised there because of the podcast. Yeah, especially, and, and you were feeling like shit. Yeah, and I was feeling like, feeling like shit. And, and like the guy is a lovely bloke he, he works he works at the wave and he said something really nice about the about the podcast he's like oh i listen i'm a fan um because of you guys i quit my job and come to work at the wave because surfing was what i love and he was also the host on the session i was on yeah. and honestly i didn't catch one wave and i was struggling so much that i got out before the session was finished so he must have thought fucking hell <laughs> what is this guy doing like i was by far the worst person in that session um and it's really weird like when i was paddling for it it wasn't like i didn't have the energy but also which i, I, I can't believe this happened i i didn't have the motivation either yeah, you just so couldn't I, be fucked yeah. no i was like do you know what i can't be bothered yeah and and like I hardly even bothered trying to get up. Do you know what? It's really lucky that you're the type of person that doesn't take that too hard on yourself. <laughs> I, I, was, I was so angry. Right? I was, and so I, I got out um, with like two or three waves still left to go. Did you take your own board in as well? No, I took my old board in ah, right. um, because I'm not going to take my, my decent board in. Um, so I got out really angry with myself and then just just to twist the knife, <laughs> the uh which i can laugh at it now but i nearly knocked him out at the time um <laughs> was the lifeguard came over to me and goes are you all right mate and i'm like yes thanks like and i know they got to do that but i felt like saying 
oh, I just can't do this fucking sport. Oh, this is so annoying. I felt like throwing my board in the wave, grabbing the boys and my missus going, let's get the hell out of here. I'm never going <laughs> back here again. You know? it, oh, it was so bad. Like, I can't believe how much it was. He probably said, are you all right, mate? Because he could see you were fucked. I, I was, I, was oh, I mean, when, when like being strong, he- healthy and, and fit, you, if that's what you feel is your identity, when that doesn't, when you don't have that for some reason, uh, oh, I, I struggle, Mike, because of, because of the demons I had with with working out and yeah. being fit and stuff. Like, when that's taken away, I think it affects me way more than like what it should do. Like a normal functioning human being shouldn't get that angry because you physically can't do something. Let me refer you to. I'm quite lucky not to suffer from any mental health issues. I think <laughs> honestly, <laughs> it was. Um, like and, and really, I shouldn't. I just shouldn't have gone. Yeah, uh, that that would have been the, the wise thing. That's the thing. Um, and I and I would then probably use that theory for all the other surf sessions this year because I've I've had too much going on, um, and I, I've squeezed it in where we've yeah. like rushed down to go get yeah. out of water as quick as you can, get as many waves as possible, and it just doesn't work. The thing like, is, it's not fun either. Like from like on a selfish point of view from it from my point of view because we rush down there get in and rush back and i like to go down go surfing mm. take your time chill out come yeah, back yeah. when you know mm. and it's not fun and it's no, no, like, no, yeah. I, I agree so it, it, surfing's really weird like that you've got to be in the right headspace for for it for you to be able to physically do it which is really strange like, I, it's really strange i find it clears my head more than i, th- I think it i think it does if you um if when you go surfing it's it's at that point where you're like you know right i've got all day i can relax down here and sort my head out and go surfing or whatever but if you're like i gotta get down uh, uh, because you know i want to get a couple of waves and then you know need i need to, get to get back, back this to time this because that, i got yeah. the, i got an early start tomorrow doing this and then i got this on the weekend and you're just frantic and it just doesn't yeah. work it just yeah. doesn't work yeah so that i mean that is the positive side of it, if, if it doesn't sound like it is, but that's, that has been my takeaway. So now I'm not going to surf again now until everything I've got going on is sorted out because yeah. it's just destroying the thing I love to do yeah. to the point where I, I, I'm not enjoying it at all. Like I, I'm actually quite hating the sport a little bit at the moment. And that's going to be really harsh to like, that's me being honest yeah. on this podcast, which yeah. is serving podcast. But I, I hopefully people out there will, understand understand that, yeah. that and maybe feel oh that's happened to me like and i'm glad somebody said that because yeah. it, uh, yeah, no, at this i moment, get i get times of it like editing sometimes mm. i'm editing a podcast this podcast and i'm thinking oh, i can't be fucking bothered to listen to this yeah. again and like yeah, go yeah. through this again i just i oh, fucking can't be bothered but you do if you go like it's like you know that, that thing of too much of a good thing isn't it you know yeah, it's like right. yeah and especially when you can't do it to the ability, you know you can do it. I think that's the thing, because you know you can do it to a, a yeah. decent ability. Mm. not saying, like, you're the best surfer out there, but, like... Definitely not. Yeah. But I, no, I you can, know you can do it to the ability where you can paddle out, you can get on a wave, and you can ride the wave. Yeah. A few little turns on there and stuff like yeah. that, and that's, that's your just, normal just ability. Just the cruise. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah. I can do the cruise, yeah, but, and when you can't do that, it's... Oh, massively it's it's probably one of the most frustrating sports i've yeah. ever been involved in yeah well uh <laughs> we hope you enjoyed matt and leighton's rant and, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so what the other thing that we were gonna say as well um so the last episode you did um with mitch yeah with mitch and toby and toby yeah i i listened to it and wow that was you you, you rang me afterwards and go look like you know, it's um, it got a bit dark and all that. Like w- when you listen to it, let me know what you think. I thought it was fantastic. I thought he was massively inspirational, and I know that's a word that we said we're not going to like use that much, but yeah. he really is. And because we we're doing that mental health kind of series that we've kind of sprinkled into like the first part of this year, yeah. The takeaway line from all that is what he said at the end of that last podcast. Yeah. This, which was, oh, I can't yeah. paraphrase it now, so I might not get it exactly right. But he, he said, the sun will always rise tomorrow and that's always worth seeing. I yeah. just thought that is just like the silver kind of lining of the mental health series that we did. Yeah. So I just like, 
like I didn't get to meet him or chat to him unfortunately but I just sort of like Toby is just yeah he was, force he was fantastic I think because I listened to it over and like it's it was a hard subject to, to like talk about and like I said I'll ask questions when I ask questions with no no malice behind it or anything like that mm. or no you know there's no trying to get something out of it but if I think of a question I'll normally just ask that question mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I asked some of the questions and listening back to it when I was editing it, I was thinking, why the fucking hell do you ask that question for? No, but, but that's a good like, thing because yeah. what well, one, um, Toby's probably been asked those questions loads anyway, so he's used yeah. to them. And two, people listening would be thinking the question that you're asking. Yeah. So it, it was, it was really good. Yeah. Um, and so we, we've had quite a, quite a deep yeah. Year for for the podcast, really. Yeah, this one, this one with Matt's been a bit lighter. Yeah, though, yeah. it's a bit like, but we you darkened it up at the end. <laughs> I did, well, I'm just being honest with where I am with Sophie at the moment. But um, like we're we're gonna like pick it up a bit, aren't we? We're gonna we're gonna raise light, the uh, light in the mood a bit. Yeah, yeah. Light in the and mood. also if you want a real light mood, our bonus episodes are now going out on Buy Me Coffee. I don't know why we didn't think of this before. It wasn't working properly. The audio on there. And uh, so just did it as a as a YouTube thing, and uh, but a link just to our yeah, just to our buy me a coffee members. I yeah. think the audio they we received an email off them the other day saying the audio may have been sorted now, so it will be on there. Yeah, but either way, it will be on there, and it's totally bonus. totally unedited and the totally unedited. Yeah, totally unedited, and it's just us chatting about what's just happened. So uh, go and join buy us buy us a coffees. <laughs> Anyway, see you later. <laughs> Cheers, bye.